You're listening to the One Step Deeper Podcast with your host, Jimmy Moore and Brittany Davis. One Step Deeper Podcast.com. This is the first time people are seeing your brand new background in your office. Yes, I feel so much more professional now that I actually have a set up. Like, we're getting somewhere with this thing. Yeah, I mean, it looks good. So, go, guys, go to becoming.brittanylee over on Instagram. You posted pictures all over uh, about it. And, yeah, very colorful on each side. I didn't think the old way looked bad, but I get it. You want it to be your own. I mean, I made this corner my own, so I get it. Um, so you feel more professional now. Yes. yes, I feel more professional. Like this is this is my job. This is my thing. This is what I'm doing. This is not just a side gig anymore. Like I'm here. I'm showing up. It's so. the thing. So uh, you asked what, how I'm doing. So I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off as of the recording of this. I am going on a road trip. Like I uh, haven't really gone anywhere in a super long time. I went to visit you a couple times in the past year and a half. Uh, I've, I visited my mom once and I visited another friend in Nashville once. That's it. No events, no nothing. So there's an event in Austin, Texas. By the time this airs, it already happened. But uh Austin, Texas with a bunch of carnivore people. So I'm like, I'm in. I need to see people. I need to hug people. I need people, people. So, and, and not because I need positivity in my life necessarily, but I need, I do need connection. But yes. we're going to talk about the whole, because I remember when the pandemic went down last year, it so nauseated me when they put out the message, be positive. I'm like, screw you. This sucks. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. And then there was such a push for it early on of just be positive. And so everybody turned on that. All right. What can I do? I'm home for two weeks. The, the initial shutdown I'm home for two weeks. What can I get done? I've been given the gift of time. That's a friend's reference. I've been given the gift of time. Uh, but so like everybody's like, yes, we're good. And then three weeks and then four weeks. And here we are a year later. And everybody's just like, do I still have to be positive? Do I still have to stay positive now? Can I have a little emotion about what the hell is going on? So, yeah, I was right there with you. I'm like, please stop telling people that. Yes. So episode 23, you guys, nobody can be happy all the time. And we're going to talk about kind of a subheading of that toxic positivity. You probably you've never heard of positivity in the way that Brittany and I are going to bring it to you today. It's what we do here on One Step Deeper. So stick around if you're new to the show. You picked a good episode to be the first one you watched or listened to. So thank you for being here today. One Step Deeper Podcast.com is the website. Go check it out, you guys. That's where you can see all of the past episodes. Uh, you can actually see them embedded in the video as well as listen to them in the audio right there on our official website. We also are a video podcast that debuts on Sundays at 4 p.m. Eastern time. So hop on over, just uh, type in the keyword one step deeper. You'll find it over on YouTube. On Mondays, it airs in all the traditional podcasting formats, Spotify, A-L-E-X-A, Apple, uh, Stitcher, all the, all the ways you can listen online. Go check it out as the podcast. And of course, we are on social media on Facebook and Instagram. Just look up One Step Deeper in both of those places and you will find our social media. And we love to interact with you uh, on those pages or you can just write to us directly. She's at becoming.brittanylee over on Instagram. I'm at living low carb man over on Instagram. So uh, reach out to us. Reach out and touch someone. That, that was an AT&T reference, I think, from the 80s. Reach out, reach out and touch someone. Reach out, call up and just say hi. Reach out. They used to have this little jingle called, reach out, reach out and touch someone. Isn't it funny what your brain remembers? <laughs> <laughs> yes, in all these moments, yes. Yes, yes. Or Bell sound. I don't remember who it was for, but I just remember the jingle. It was good. It was so, so let's get into this positivity thing, because let, let me defend positivity for a moment. I think for some people, when they think positive, it at least gets them to what we talked about in the past 
of that neutral feeling rather than getting deep down into a malaise. Because I think some people's natural inclinations in their brain are to go to dark places when things are not as bad as what they're feeling, but they let themselves go down. So if they think positive, it at least brings them up to neutral so they don't fall into that pit. Is is that is that horrible kind of to think that way or do you think that's true? Um, I mean, maybe a little bit, but, um, and we'll definitely get into the, the in-depth of what I believe on the positive, negative, neutral, like that is so important to this talk, but like neutral. Yeah. I guess if you're trying to find positivity somewhere, maybe not necessarily about the hard thing you're going through, but find positivity somewhere that can pull you to that neutral zone. You just encountered it a couple of days ago because you and I were having a discussion where you were needing to go to a dark place to think about, but you're like, nope, I'm going to stay right here in this more positive view of the situation. I'm not giving away any details, but it, it proves the point. You know what I'm talking about. So, and, and you did that so you could protect your mental health energy. And you knew that about yourself. I think this is the problem. There are people when they get into that malaise and then they try to come, they can't come up because they just, they haven't learned to recognize the signals that they're kind of going in this dark path. Whereas you do, you're like, uh, uh, I'm not opening that door, Jay. I'm going to stay up here. If it means I kind of avoid it or have a different perspective on it for now, just to maintain my mental energy. And, and of course, yeah. you've also been going through a lot of like string of stuff back to back. We talked about the fire last week and your, your baby girl broke her arm in two places. So you've had some stuff go on in life where neutral took you to be a little bit positive to get there. Yeah, so uh, my three-year-old, guys, broke her arm in two places, and I wasn't here, and it was, it's been the sweetest experience, and I think it happening this week on the pod, like this week of the podcast, talking about pox, toxic positivity, it just worked out where I have a real life experience of what was going on. And and yes, I had the fires last week and just thing after thing after thing has been happening. And I'll be honest with you, the fact that I'm here and I'm smiling, I'm like, this personal development stuff is working. It's working. It's working. And yes, I had to get to a place like specifically with the fire last week. Like I couldn't freak out. Like I had to keep it together. Like I can't go to that deep, dark place. And then with my daughter, I'm like, nope. I can't do that. I have to show up for her. And so I wasn't trying to like, it's okay, honey. This happened for a good reason. <clears throat> no. Oh, but she okay. had so well. I mean, the whole time, at least what you showed us on, on your okay. Instagram page, and I, I, I know that little one, she would scream if she was upset. Um, right. She was not. She was laughing. The next day you were goofing around with them in the morning and she had the little sling on and you're, oh, look at my little monkeys. And and she was, you know, and slinging her arm around. I'm like, wow, like I would be a little blubbering baby over in the corner, but she was doing great. Right. And I'm always like so validating of her. And so when we were in the emergency room and of course with COVID, my husband couldn't be back there. And so I was like, maybe you don't have to stay strong for mama. Like, it's OK. You can cry. You can let it out. She's like, I'm OK. I'm like, can mama cry? Because I just don't have to I don't want to cry. Can I cry? But I kept it all together, but I would never like push that idea of like, honey, you broke your arm. You need to be positive about this. Like you need to look at this in a good way. Or like when we had to evacuate our home, like I would never look at somebody. Like I had a friend who lived on the tree line and I was so concerned for them. Like, yes, my house is further this way, still in danger, but like they're more in danger. Yeah. And so like I, I would never go just be positive that you're going to lose your brand new house. Like, let's just think of the positives. Like you can't think of the positive things in the midst of the chaos. Like you can't, you can't do that. It's not how that works. I don't think enough people think this idea of be positive, stay happy. I don't think they think that through to its logical conclusion. It makes no sense, but it goes back to something you talk to me about quite often uh, in our chats of, it's okay to have a variety of emotions. That's humanity. It, it, it's the people that are happy all the time. I always think are suspect. It's like, all right, you can't be happy all of the time. I mean, I get it. I tend to be a pretty happy guy most of the time and pretty positive guy most of the time. 
but it's not because I'm covering up. If I'm having issues, I'm sharing those too. And as my best friend, I'm sharing a lot more with you than I do the world, but I don't put on a face. Now, I also think you can take toxicity to the other direction. There's toxic negativity as well. There are people that ride that sympathy train and they want the pity. So they put the negative out there because they know it'll give them that dopamine release of people. Oh, I'm sorry you're going through that. And it it does cut both ways. Oh, yeah, for sure. But see, the people that are always positive or they come off as always positive, it's not real. It's fake 100% of the time. I, I, I just don't. I don't care. Like it's fake. And what they're doing is they're not validating what they're actually feeling. They're ignoring what they're actually feeling. But those feelings don't just disappear because you invalidate them. They don't go away. They go to this shadow self. This You're just pushing them down and pushing them down. This shadow self eventually gets so big, it overtakes you. And that's just who you are for maybe forever because, like, you've tried this positive thing for, for so long that you just crash and burn. And it, like, you're just your shadow self and all those emotions and feelings you never validated or never talked through. They come up and they explode. I have a person in my life that I know like for a fact, everybody walks around on eggshells around them because they're so afraid they're going to say the one thing that this person is going to explode because this person never, never validates their feelings. They don't believe that emotions should be talked about. Like that's mm, no emotions, feelings. What? No, you're like good vibes only like, ew. <laughs> ew. Well, and then the other thing that that does when the people are positive all the time is it sets up this unrealistic expectation that you should be positive all the time. As I scroll through Instagram and I see those people, and I love people that that have good content that's inspirational, and I try to be that in my own content. But I also tell it straight. I, I've had too much Britney influence to not do that a little bit. You do it like hardcore. When I read your posts, I'm like, yeah, like I relate to you so much. Um, well, plus you're my friend, but I, I relate to what you write in your posts because I don't see, yes, I see happiness, I see joy, I see positivity in the right quantity, but then I see enough of real life where it offsets. And even when, I'm going to tell on you a little bit, even when I know you're going through some stuff in your background, even in your writing, as pointed as it can be, I know it's softened a little bit because the world can't handle Britney in the raw. I get to hear Britney in the raw a lot, <laughs> but I guess they could handle it, but you you slowly kind of slip it in, slip it in, slip it in. You do it a little bit here too, but it's it's mostly a a more positive spin, but not positive to the point of toxicity. Yes, I, that is a really good way to put it because pretty much you've had some of that rawness that I can bring, but my husband is pretty much like the person that's experienced like the deepest, rawest version of who I am. And um, it can be a little scary. It can be a little scary. I mean, maybe not scary. Maybe that's not the right adjective there, but like it can be rough because I am very raw and open with everything that I feel. I validate everything that I feel, even if it's in time. So right now, this idea of toxic positivity, I have a family member dying on hospice right now. And that's, I mean, like we're talking days at this point and that's really freaking hard. And then my daughter broke her arm and then the evacuations and then this thing going over here and then this bad relationship and like all of this stuff is just swirling and typical past Brittany, past Brittany before personal development would shut down. I wouldn't talk to anybody. I wouldn't show up. I would lose it. I would spiral. I would become that raw version, like unedited. And so I would pull myself away. And so now I can simultaneously hold all of that going on. And I'm not okay. I'm not positive right now. I'm not happy all of this is happening. I'm not happy. But I'm okay. And I'm okay because I'm not telling myself be positive or I'm not listening to any chatter of someone telling me just look on the bright side or they're going to be in a better place. So I'm not listening to that. I'm going, this sucks. This is hard. Brittany, you're allowed to feel whatever you feel. Last night, I literally did a story last night, night before last. Um, 
one of these nights, I sat on my floor in my office going, I'm having a hard time. I am on my floor in my office in the dark because I am having a moment and I need to validate everything I'm feeling. I'm sad. I'm upset. I'm pissed. I'm angry. Instead of going, nope, can't feel any of this. Let me put this away. Let me put this over here. I felt everything. I stood up. It was like a breath of fresh air that I felt all of those emotions. Oh, but Brittany, God wouldn't give you more than you can handle. And he does all of this for a purpose and a reason. You just need to seek that out and be joyful in him. I'm mocking it a little, but it's true. And, and I, be I believe some of those things, but I think it's used too much. And I know we kind of touch on Christian culture and we still want to hit that in a whole episode, but that is another form of toxic positivity we have to address. Let's stop pretending like when you go to church on Sunday morning and all those people are, hey, brother, brother, and smiling and everybody's happy that they weren't just beating their kid in the car. Or the night before something happened where cuss words were used. Like, I'm getting real here, guys. Like this, we don't call this one step deeper for no good reason. We're going deep and for the jugular on this one. Toxic positivity is an epidemic in churches. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It is so invalidating. If you have something that you're going through, they will always go, you're not trusting God enough. That is like, like, honestly, that's where my deconstruction started when I realized the toxic positivity that's in the church. Um, and, you know, I've gone through this deconstructing all of these rules and things that we've been taught and like actually diving in emotions. I will never, 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 never forget the Christian that used God to twist my miscarriage. And like, I just couldn't like yeah. not that's hard. Not that there was zero validation. of Wow, that's hard. It was immediately. Well, God needed them more than you. I mean, like, how do, what do you say to that? Are you comforted by those? Not even a tiny little bit. No. Because all that does is twist and make me angry at God if that's the truth. You know what I'm saying? If that's the actual truth, God needed them more than you. Yeah. Then why did he give them to me? You know, like, I just, I just yeah. wanted to be so angry. Also, toxic positivity just negates life. Like life yeah. is always great. Like this past year has shown us, year, year and a half has shown us life can suck sometimes. <laughs> and it's okay to grieve the suckage, to be upset you hadn't been able to travel and see friends and hug people. That's That's been my thing. Um, it's okay to have those feelings. It doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't mean you're not trusting God enough. It doesn't mean all the reasons we assign to it it just means you're human and you're feeling the feels. That's yes. okay too. Yeah. If you try to cover it up, it's kind of like the Ready Whip uh, uh, example we had a couple weeks ago where you're just covering it up. And yeah. Underneath there, just take a couple bites. You're going to get there. You'll smell it. It's still going to be there. And positivity, I think people think, oh, if I'm just positive, all the woes go away. And like you said, it just piles up even more until it's an even bigger monstrosity that you have to deal with later. Right. So speaking of like the church and all of the, and these people that they say these nice things like toxic positivity and all of these statements that we hear. Um, and I think we should say a couple of them. It Please. immediately shuts down any conversations about emotions. If you're going, wow, I'm having a really hard, if you're venting to somebody, I'm having a hard day, this situation happens. And whatever. And they're just like, be positive. Like, what do you say back to that? What do you even be? There's no conversation. It almost, exactly. It almost shuts the conversation down of there's nothing else that you can say because they've completely invalidated you. Well, and, and indirectly, they're telling you, you're not allowed to be anything but positive. That's toxic as all get out. Like, yeah. let's stop invalidating that people are going to have feelings. And I, I know you've talked about a lot of the different feelings that you can have and you can have them all simultaneously. Yes, you can be positive, but still be dealing with a very heavy issue of a family member on hospice that's about to die. 
you're positive on camera today so that people can see you and have the happy face. But deep down inside, you have this kind of hurt that's going on that yeah. makes you go crawl in your room and sit in the dark in the middle of the night sometime. I mean, it that happens. Yeah. And I, how do you process through those other emotions besides happy and positive if you don't face them head on and acknowledge they're there? There, there's the problem. Like I talked about this on Better with Brittany. Uh, one week, <laughs> I talked about this idea that people don't know emotions outside of happiness or sadness. They don't identify them. They've never been taught. Like the very bait. Like even emotionally advanced people, like know the Inside Out Five, the Disney movie Inside Out Five. They know fear, disgust, anger joy and sadness like that's the five and mostly people only know anger sadness and joy like that's that's it that's what people know as far as emotions but there's so many more if you don't know how to identify what you're feeling you can't you can't process like you have to it's just like the step programs of you know an alcoholic or someone who's addicted to something they have to identify i i, I have a problem you have to start there with identity so in order to identify what your process, like in order to process, you have to identify what the hell you're processing. And so right. if all you've been told your whole life is be positive, you got to be happy. And it's either happiness or sadness. If you're not happy, then you automatically must be sad. And that's not always the truth. So as far as the person who I'm losing, I can look at it a hundred different ways. I know that this person has been in pain for years and so I am excited for them for that sweet release of pain, that they will no longer feel that pain. But at the same time, I'm sad that they won't be here anymore. But I'm also afraid for the people who are closest to him, like live in the house with him. I'm afraid for them. I'm I am sorrowful, like for my children who who this is their grandfather for all, you know, like not blood related, but like that's their grandfather calling Papa. Like he's not going to be here anymore. And I think about all the future, all of that, but I've identified all of that instead of going, well, he's going to be in a better place. Maybe that's true. Maybe that is true, but it shuts down all of those other feelings that I'm having and others are having dealing with this. Well, and there's a lot of layers to feeling what you feel about him because he was uh, a strong figure positively in your life for so yeah. long, whereas other people in your life were not so strong in your life in a good way. So there's even some symbolism to this loss, meaning you're losing a part of yourself. I've been meaning to talk to you about this off the air, but knowing that this some this is somebody that was so seminal in your life. It's kind of like when you, you're going to lose me someday. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. But if you lost Wild Man, it'd be the same way. Somebody so simple in your life that you can't even imagine. In fact, you and I've had those discussions about Wild Man. I don't know what I would do if I didn't have Wild Man in my life. If, if to go away for some reason, it would be, I, I, my world would crumble. And, right. and yeah, no amount of toxic positivity or, or any kind of positivity is going to help you in that moment. I was about to say, let somebody talk to positivity me if I lose my husband. Let somebody come at me because Brianka is coming out. Yes, <laughs> Brianka will become permanent, uh, not just Britney's alter ego. It will be Britney. Brianka will be Britney. <laughs> Don't come at me with that. And I've honestly, I try to be calm with certain people. So my mom very much into the Christian culture. And, and whereas like, I respect where she's coming from. My mom is like so bad about toxic positivity with herself, with yeah. herself. Like I listen to how she talks. I'm like, Whoa, mom, hold up, <laughs> rewind because she'll feel something. And she's like, no, 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 I'm not going to feel that. No, God's got that. And I'm like, you're right. But honey, that's hard. Like, just pause for a second. You keep pushing this away and not dealing with it. And so you can put on a fake smile. Like, honey, deal with that. You you got to deal with that. Because if you don't, what happens is we have a falling out like we did. My mom and I had a recent falling out. We're okay now. But it was her continuing to push things back and push things back and push things back. And maybe even, a no, it wasn't me. Because I say what I feel. I don't do that no more. I don't. 
I don't try to be quiet about how I feel anymore. But it was just this pushing down until that shadow self takes over and explodes. It's like, nope, I, nope, I don't like that. And there's this big explosion. But it was that toxic positivity of she wasn't letting herself be anything but positive in these really hard, gut wrenching experiences. Yeah. And she's not uncommon. Yeah. A lot of people. And again, not to bemoan, if that gives people peace in their heart so they don't get into that deep malaise, okay, go for it. But just realize until you face those other emotions, all the positivity in the world ain't going to help that. I mean, and I got to admit, like, I bought into the be positive and stay positive. And a lot of people do. And we're not trying to bemoan that if that's you and that's who you are naturally. Because some people will say, well, I'm just naturally positive. I'm like, so you never have any bad things that happen? Well, I do, but I manage it by staying positive about the situations. And I'm like, okay, but what happens to your body when you have positivity and yet you have resentment? And yet you have anger about a situation. And yet you have disappointment you have betrayal happen all those things if you don't manage those emotions they're going to manage you and it's going to manifest physiologically yes if you don't manage them they're going to manage you that's really good that's a good one this is where that idea of positive negative neutral comes in so yes we all know what positive looks like and we all know what negative looks like typically we know what that looks like, the end of the spectrum. But in the middle, we have this idea of neutrality of this is where for me, neutrality honors me the most where I'm having in a difficult situation. It's easy to be positive about my brand new, beautiful, redone office. Like that's easy. That's easy to be positive about. It's easy to be positive about my house. Like there are things that are easy to find positivity around, but then there's things that are very easy to find negativity with like losing a loved one and so I try to find neutrality neutrality just I'm not happy about this but I'm not going to let myself spiral about this either and so that's when I start thinking that okay what can I find that's balanced what can I find that's okay this sucks this is hard but I can do this I can go you know I just that place of neutral I'm trying to think of another example oh Listen, I got a wild man story for you, and you're going to laugh at this one. I don't know if I've told you this one yet. So the guys at work joke around with my husband about who I am. They've seen a couple of my things. They know what I talk about. And a couple of the guys have even come over to the house, and I'll do what I do. I'll like pick out their little statements that they say. I'm like, oh, so that happened. You know, I'll do that. So they all know. Well, Chris has a new boss, and his new boss comes in, and Chris is having a really bad day. Like. He's also very close to this person that we're losing. And we had just gotten the news that, you know, we were down to days or, and and he was just not having a good day. There were new changes at work, stuff not going on, like just not going good. And so he wasn't like in a negative, nasty mood, but he also wasn't like smiling and have, he was neutral. He just was, I'm just here. That's the best I can do. I'm just showing up. And so his boss pulls him aside in the office and he's like, listen, you got to leave all that stuff at the door. Okay. Oh. You, you got to smile. You got to, you got to boost morale here. And he, and Chris almost starts chuckling and the guy in the office with him starts chuckling because they're like, he don't know. He don't, he don't know his wife. <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> they don't know. And so he comes home and tells me this story and I'm like, where's he at? Let me at him. Let me at him. Let me at him. But it's like the workplace that you're supposed to drop everything at the door. Like it, are you kidding me? Like, what? Oh, I worked in retail, and I had almost that exact thing verbatim. Don't bring your problems to work. And and I agree, as a principal, you don't want to have a customer be influenced by a negative energy. But if he was being neutral, and he yes. wasn't expressing anything negative, but he just wasn't jovial, I don't think we have, we don't have any obligation to be jovial to anyone. And we don't know what people are going through. Like I've had a lot of judgment over the past year and a half as I've gone through something extremely okay. difficult on me. And people are like, oh, well, you, you just need to give it to God and let it go. And you need all kinds of things, but you yeah. get the, and yeah. like, you have no idea what I've had to deal with. 
And I know a lot of people have had to deal with all kinds of stuff, but that's the point. We don't know what anybody is going through. So why do we demand positivity when, when maybe all I want to do is kill myself? Let's get real. Like yeah. there's people, they're on the brink of that. And they're on the brink of starting an addiction of some sort, not just like food, but drugs, alcohol, whatever. Let's be a little more kind and cognizant that life can be tough. And I'm looking at a little lady that knows all about life being tough over this past year and a half for you has been incredibly tough. But yeah. you're still here, not because you kept a positive attitude about it all, but because you decided to deal with it, feel the feels in the moment, have your moment, have friends that you can call when you want to express them, or go hole up in a room and not talk to anybody. That was your modus operandi for a while. You're, you're better at that than you used to be. Um, and, and, but, but it didn't take positivity. It took working through those emotions, feeling them and not running away from them. I, I, I think that's what positivity does to become toxic is it pretends like you're not allowed to have those feelings and process them. And here's the thing too. I have grown so much as a man in this yeah. past year and a half of going through probably the most horrendous thing I've ever gone through in my life. And that includes being beat as a kid. Yeah. Tells you how serious it is. And I have learned so much. I have changed. I have gotten the lessons from that. Not because I stayed positive through it all, but because in the midst of it, I was like, Oh, oh, I need to, oh, oh, and I learned lessons and I started applying and it gave me perspective that I didn't have. Whereas if I kept a positive attitude, all that perspective would have never happened. So I view like positivity in chaos as perfection, which we all know is crap. There's no such thing. And me as a perfectionist and, and have very deep perfectionist tendencies, like both both situational and things that have been put on me and my personality in general, like I strive for perfection and everything, like trying to be positive when your life is literally falling apart. Like that's like you saying, I'm going to be perfect and it doesn't happen. It's not a thing. It's not. And so like, again, with everything that you've been going through this year, your goal should never have been to be positive through it. It's, I am in neutrality right now. I am neutral about what has happened to me. I'm not going to let myself spiral and pick up some habit or pick up something or cope in a negative way. I'm not going to let myself do those things. But I'm also not going to be like, oh, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Like, this sucks, okay? And so, like, when, last year when I was in the hospital and I was going through all that, I did spiral. I, I couldn't. I did spiral. I, I remember crying out to my husband poor thing. I'm so sad he had to go through this. <laughs> Not necessarily me. Him. I was in the hospital bed just crying out like, please just let me die. I'm miserable. This sucks. I'm hurting. I'm in pain. Just let me die. And I started talking to him about all of my in life plans and what I was going to do and, and how to, how to all of that, like, you know, cremate me, don't bury me. Like I started getting there because I had spiraled so low I was so low and then I get home out of the hospital and I'm on the couch and I can't move I can't do this I can't play with my kids I can't and so like just the spiral just took over and in that spiral there's no way that anybody could reach in and go be positive and I'm gonna be oh that's the answer let me be positive I know how to do it now I know how to make it through this but no like as I'm on the ground just like looking up I'm like okay I cannot be positive even now, a year plus later, I am not positive about the the problems that I still have from this surgery and this hospitalization, but I am neutral. I am at a place of neutral where, wow, I'm in pain today. Wow, my body is not letting me move today. Let me honor that and sit the hell down. Let me sit down. Well, and a lot of people would look at you on this show and hear you on the podcast and see your work with Better With Brittany and how you, you're being an encouragement teacher, like a lot of this mind stuff that we talk about, and go, 
well, you had to be positive to get to this point, Brittany. There's no way that you could be all these things you are now without having a positivity. And that's the point, guys. You don't have to be positive to come out of situations. I haven't been positive. You know what it did for me? It made me go very introspective. So anybody can just scroll back through the last year of my Instagram posts and you'll see all kinds of inspirational, sometimes really biting commentary because that's that was my way of managing. Now, was that being positive? Maybe, I guess, but it was my way of managing it. And so rather than positivity, find an outlet that gives you a release, that gives you an ability, like writing is my thing, speaking is my thing, so I can easily do those things. But you might have something else that, that you're good at. Maybe you go into a dark room and, and you shut off the blinds and you turn the air down and you get cold, like, like you talked about changing the temperature to shift your, your body. That's not positivity either. And yet it helps move you in the direction of better. I think that's what we're trying to communicate here today is positivity is a way, I guess, to kind of push you to be better, but not the only way. There's other outlets for feeling those emotions and expressing them in a good way that will get you better without having to fake it. Yeah, so this po toxic positive, I keep trying to say toxic positivity. Yes, we need to <laughs> toxic positivity. Positive toxicity. Wow. It puts emotions in positive, positive toxicity. Good Lord. Did I say it again? You said positive toxicity. <laughs> positive, positive. Excuse me as my brain is just shutting down. <laughs> positive positivity. Well, wow. there we go. I got it out. Goodness. It puts emotions in good and bad categories, but that's yeah. not what emotions are. I hate this idea, happy, good, sad, bad. No, emotions are information. That's yeah. it. That's all they are. They're data for us to, ex like, oh, I'm feeling this way. Let me do something with that. But what happens is we view sad as bad or something negative as, oh, I'm a bad person. I have to do something with this. And so this is when people start looking for coping mechanisms. And this is where I really struggle with like negative mindset because I'm not against being negative about a situation. I'm not against that. I, I do think neutral is better than negative. I would rather be neutral about something than negative, but it's not a bad thing to be negative. But the problem with negativity is exactly what I was saying earlier. Negativity starts the spiral. When you start looking at something in the bat and like in this negative way, you begin to spiral and you look for anything to grab onto to pull yourself up, anything. And so instead of anchoring yourself to your why or anchoring yourself to the few positive things that you can pull out or just this level of neutrality, you find alcohol this is where people are like oh i've had a really hard day i'm gonna come home and drink a glass of wine i don't support that mindset i don't live that myself i love wine i like to drink i enjoy alcohol but i don't let it be something for me to zone out with i don't use it as a i've had a hard day i deserve this drink i never let myself go there matter of fact like here's a little confession I have a pack of organic cigarettes in my freezer that I've had for three years. Three years I've had this pack in my freezer. Because every once in a while I'm like, I think I want a cigarette today. But I still have like six cigarettes in it. I don't know how many are in pack, like 20. It's not something that I let myself go, oh, I've had a hard day. I'm struggling. I need to go have this. I need to blow off some steam. I find anything else, anything else to calm myself and cope. Uh, dark room, temperature change, water, coffee, Lord, the coffee, give me the coffee. That helps me cope with anything. I find anything that's going to bless me as I cope. So um, learning, writing, YouTube, watching videos, talking to a friend, I find anything to cope that's going to lift me higher, not anything that's going to push me further down or make me take these emotions and silence them more. So for me, alcohol, what does it do? It kind of numbs you, you know, where you, you're not processing anything. You're just 
numbing everything and it doesn't heighten your sense at all you're just like i feel nothing i can't process you're not processing that so that's where like this became a long talk to say look for healthy coping mechanisms look for anything to push yourself into to pull yourself through these difficult times rather than staying in negativity and just continuing to spiral down you know when you stop and think about positivity it's a lie to yourself if you break it down you're lying to yourself but people are like, well, nobody wants to be around the negative nanny. And that's true. I don't think you need to be negative all the time, but you don't need to be positive all the time. Having that mix shows your humanity. Yes. And I wish people would just be more human. It doesn't mean, again, that you need to blab to the whole world every little woe you're going through. I don't think that's what we're talking about here either. But don't lie to yourself. And say things are bad and you're in your malaise because you're toxically negative all the time. And then people give you the pity, but you get a dopamine release from that. And you really enjoy when people feel pity on you. So you share more malaise. I'm talking about social media. Um, and then and then the other side, always positive. What, never anything's wrong in your life. Oh, but, it, oh, but it'll be great because it's positive. And I think both ways you are lying. I don't know any human being that is always positive or always negative without it being a choice that they be that way every human being i know has all these multiplicity of emotions sometimes simultaneously and it's it's incredible in fact i was just watching one of the influencers i follow a pretty big name out there in the kind of positive world and she did some reiki recently and she's like i feel happy and sad and angry and 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 she had all these emotions simultaneously i guess she'd never felt that before she's like is this normal and i was thinking at britney at becoming britney <laughs> <laughs> to go tell her yes girl feel the feels it's all right yes it and it is some it's so odd when you get to a place where you can experience multiple different emotions at the same time people don't experience one much less 10 at the same time but i could seriously if i stopped i could dive into probably 10 different things that i am feeling all simultaneously right now and it's not scary to me because i'm like i'm allowed to do this i remember being a kid and like some of the statements like i, I have some written down just stay positive we said that a lot don't worry be happy like the little fish i know everybody saw the fish Oh, well, it, it, well, actually, the fish was based on that Bobby McFerrin song from 1988. Yes, yes. Um, everything. Oh, this one. My, my grandma, my sweet grandma. I love her so much, but she is always this person. I just believe everything's going to work out the right way. Everything's going to work out the way it's supposed to be. I'm like, Grandma, maybe that's true, but I'm sad right now. Please let me be sad. I am not happy about this. Yeah. Or Oh, this one. This one's actually a toxic positivity statement that we've actually covered before. If I can do it, you can do it. Because that completely invalidates that everybody has an individual situation going on. But yes, uh, everything happens for a reason. Positive vibes only. I've been guilty of this one. I've been guilty of this one. We all have. We all have said every one of those phrases. But again, we never thought it through. What was that doing to that person feeling yeah. something other than positive? You're invalidating. You're basically giving them a proverbial middle finger that I don't care how you feel. This is how you're supposed to feel. I saw somebody with a shirt and I want it so bad, Jimmy. I want it so bad. It said all vibes welcome. I'm like, yes, yes, I need that so bad. Um, and then another one that people say, um, I mean, and I think I've called you out on this one before. It could be worse. Could be worse. That's when you're invalidating where you are right now. It could be worse. And I'm like, I always say this. No, it could be better. Because that validates where you are and that it's not the worst that it could be, but it could be better. And so I always turn that one with it could be better. 
or I would say it could be a whole lot better. <laughs> yes, it could it be a little. Be. It could be a little worse, but it could be a whole hell of a lot better. Exactly, and so just and the way to like combat all of these things, like, is it's really difficult to combat someone who's so stuck in toxic positivity and they don't see it as toxic. I remember unfollowing somebody. Like this was my level of I unfollowed them because they started talking about toxic positivity and they were like. I don't understand what this is because I'm just always positive no matter what happens. And when I go through this and I'm just positive and I was like, no. Well, you know how this got started? Uh, there was this author named Norman Vincent Peale way back in the day. Old, old guy when I was a kid. So he's probably long dead by now. But Norman Vincent Peale, Peale uh, P-E-A-L-E, had a book called The Power of Positive Thinking. Now, what his role in that, yeah, you should look it up if you haven't heard of that that before. His role in using that, and it was a bestseller and a huge selling book for many years, probably still sells pretty well. His whole point was don't let yourself get in that place where you start to have mental challenges. Yeah. Um, positive thinking, but it goes back to what we talked about at the beginning. Sometimes being just positive enough to get yourself out of the malaise to be neutral is a good thing. But then if you take it to the nth degree that a family member's dying, oh, it's the greatest thing ever. No, it's not. But yeah. I will acknowledge his role in my life and be grateful that I had him for when, how, as long as I've had him. And I will honor his life by living on my life the way he would have wanted me to live. That's a neutral position that's a lot more positive than, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Yes, exactly. And I'm not going to lie. It's really easy for me to do that. It's easy for me to go, what am I going to do without this person? This person has been a father to me. I crave this man to fill that role. Like I, And he has been that for me. And to lose that, it would be really easy for me to go, what the hell am I going to do now? But I won't let myself go there. And I will do and remember every word that he said to me. And I will go, all right, now it's time for me to honor everything that he taught me and to, to take every lesson that he taught me. And he is such a, and I, of course, I called him out on it back in the day when, when he was doing well. I'm fine. I'm fine. I was like, you were going to go to your deathbed saying I'm fine. And sure enough, the last time I was over at his house and he was in his bed, he's like, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. You know what fine stands for? It's an acronym. Freak, insecure, neurotic, emotional. Yes. Yeah. He's, oh God. I mean, he's so sweet. And I know he means it like in the best way, but like, He's definitely one of those people. But yeah, I could I could spiral, but I'm not going to let I'm not going to let myself. Well, and some people uh, let's try to soften this a little bit for people because they're my life. Well, I'm being called out today. Well, good. Number one. But number two, a lot of people will be positive to protect the people around them. You said the other day when you were in the hospital with Alma Grace and wild man had to stay in the lobby while you were back there and you, it's OK to cry. And no, nah, I'm good. And, and you're just like, well, wait a minute, like, I, I I have to hold it together for her, but she's holding it together for me. It was kind of a nice little role reversal for you. <laughs> yeah, it was so crazy. And like, at first, that's why I kept telling her, sweetheart, you can cry, sweetheart, you can be upset. And she just was like, okay. And I'm like, well, maybe she's just okay. Because I, I always validate my kids, like, when they're feeling something, and like, I'm like, it's okay to feel exactly what you feel. But last night, I had to say this like 10 hundred times to my very moody eight-year-old. I think eight is going to just, it's going to be the year. It's going to be the year. Uh, She's just very upset last night, distraught about everything. Everything was upsetting her and triggering her. And I was like, you can feel everything that you're feeling. You're just not allowed to hurt people with your feelings. You're, you're not allowed to do that, okay? You can't take what you're feeling and push that on anybody else. You got to take care of that on your own. I said that like a hundred times last night. Oh, goodness. But yes, it, it, it was kind of crazy that she she just was okay. She was all right. And it inspired me so much. I've said that a hundred times too between people that I've talked to about it. And they're just so concerned about her. I'm like, listen, I'm so inspired by how Alma Grace handled this. Like she's three 
And she could have cried. She had every reason to cry. I was allowing her to cry. Hey, get upset, get mad, get angry. This happened. She just, she just didn't. I thought that was so cool and just so inspiring. Well, and she didn't like put on any positivity. That was just her. I mean, a three-year-old doesn't have an awareness of any of that. Any. Anyway. This was her naturally saying, "Okay, it happened. Yeah, I've got a little bit of an owie. I assume they." Give medication for the pain of where it broke and that nothing motrin that was it well for a three-year-old a little bit of motrin probably is like a vicodin <laughs> for <you and me. laughs> yes but but the way yeah. go ahead i was just gonna say like alma grace is the perfect example of how you do this yeah. she, she wasn't like positive even though it came across positive to mama because mama mm -hmm. was Brought and mama wanted to cry, but mama was trying to hold it together. But then she was like, I'm okay. I'm not great. I can't go and keep jumping off of beds, but I'm better than I thought I would be. And so I'm good, mama. You know, and that, what an example. Yeah. I was just still, even now, just so inspired by her. And it just makes me, it made me like look at myself. So when she was in the hospital, I had been working in the office all day and I hadn't really eaten and I wasn't doing well because I was physically in pain. My stomach was very much hurting and causing me so much pain and I'm in the hospital so I can't work. Like I didn't have sweats on. I had jeans on. So I was, I was in so much pain. And I was like, you know what? How cool is it that my three-year-old broke her arm? And no, she's not like, woohoo, this is the best thing ever. But like she was good. And I was like, you know what? This isn't the worst pain I've ever felt. I do feel pain. I'm validating that I feel pain. Yeah. I'm not saying that I can't feel this, but like, how cool is it that I can view, hey, I'm in pain right now, but I'm also okay. I just thought about why this happened. You have so given all of your girls permission to feel what they feel rather than validating or invalidating anything that they feel. Maybe previously and there's some parents that do this if, if remember how like you'd skin your your knee and oh and they're like oh we'll rub some dirt on it it's okay and it's it, it's the same kind of thing kind of being positive about something that really hurt um that but because you let them feel authentically what they feel that when push came to shove and it became a real world situation where usually you can be upset she wasn't because oh mama's here Mama said I could feel what I feel and I'm okay. Yeah, okay. I got a couple of broken bones, but I'm okay. Like I I think the way you the way you raise them to feel what they feel made that happen, Brittany. Yes. Yeah, oh yeah. I've already like came to that conclusion. I'm trying not to tear up about it because I realize that what I'm doing with them did lead to that. But I also realized that me on a personal development journey and pulling myself back to childhood. Like all the things I learned in childhood to pulling myself back there and going, wow, I'm allowed to feel anything. It validate, like it just, it, it inspires me so much to feel what I feel. I'm allowed to feel what I feel. And I might not be, I think this whole death situation, like, yeah, it's really sad. It's really sad. And, and I do have feelings about it, but I don't have to be this or have to look this way or have to be like, and even when I go over there, um, of course I'm trying to stay strong around him. I don't want him to see me distraught. Like, you know, this, that's not what he needs to deal with right now. He has other important things, but with the people that are there sitting by his bedside, they know, they know. And I'm upset and we, we are upset together and we have feelings together and, and validate what we're feeling. We're not waiting to process all of this and it's just it's really cool to be able to just feel what you feel and not have somebody and if somebody does come at you with stay positive people do come at you like you can choose to say something back you can choose to whatever or you can just ignore it whatever works best for you but I always like if someone says something toxically positive to me I'm just like listen Sometimes life hands us shit and we're allowed to feel it. We're, we're allowed to process it. 
I'm allowed to be sad. I'm allowed to be upset. I don't have to spin this in a positive way to make myself okay. I'm allowed to feel it. Alma Grace was allowed to feel it. You've been allowed to feel everything that you felt this year over the hard thing that you've been going through. My husband going to work was allowed to feel what he felt and he didn't need anybody being positive, yeah. like toxically positive towards him. And if you're the type of person who does this to other people and you don't knowingly do it, like if you feel called out, like, wow, maybe I am toxically positive. Here's some better things to say. I, I'm here. I'm hearing that you're having a hard time. I'm so sorry you're going through that. And you, as the person giving advice or talking, don't feel it. It makes us feel uncomfortable because we can't fix the problem. We feel like we have to fix it. It's not your job. It's not your job to fix it. It's just your job to listen. And so literally say, I'm listening. That's hard for you. I can't imagine going through that. I hear that it could be better right now. And uh, I mean, but those are just some better things to say than just yeah. be positive. You, you have said, I'm sorry, a lot for me. Yeah. Uh, and I can tell when you get to that point, you're like, I, I don't know what else to say. Like, that's that's it. And, and but it's comforting, not, oh, you're going to get through this. Uh, my mom does the I'm sorry, but it's kind of in a whiny voice. <laughs> like. Mom, stop that. Um, God has your best interest. Okay, I know he does, but okay, let's let that go. I'm sorry is good enough. Just say, it. stop it. I'm sorry. You know, we're good. <laughs> I always tell them, I, I tell my mom now, yep, yeah, you're right. God does have me, but God also gave me emotions, and I'm allowed to feel every single one of them that he gave yeah. me. <laughs> so, guys, toxic positivity. Hopefully, we shined a light on this topic for you here today that maybe, like Brittany said, you have never thought that you've done this before. We have all done this, so there's no shame if you've done it before, but I think awareness makes you do better. And so now that you're aware of these things, maybe it makes you more empathetic with people rather than just shouting some colloquialism at them thinking that's going to give them comfort when usually they're in a better place you're you, the, you know when you lost your babies no maybe they are yes okay fine but that doesn't give me comfort let me feel that i'm upset at this loss so toxic positivity hopefully here in episode 23 you got a lot out of this and we're really glad you uh, were here today close the show for us all right, so that's episode 23 of the One Step Deeper podcast. Head over to onestepdeeperpodcast.com. You can find all the episodes there. Uh, all the episodes air on Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on YouTube. And that's where you can watch the video format of this. You can also catch the video format on Facebook on the One Step Deeper podcast community. And over on Instagram, the full, there's tidbits that come out like 15 minutes, like the best part of the show. And I love those little tidbits. It just kind of wets your taste a little bit. But then, then there is the whole full episode also on Instagram. And then Mondays, the audio version on Apple, Stitcher, podcast, anywhere that you listen to podcasts, it is there. And thank you guys so much for listening. And next week, we've got a really fascinating topic. I took a quick little peek at it today. Anger. Is it an emotion? Can, can you, is it an emotion to have anger? Oh, man. Next week, I'm going to be all the way on, all the way on to talk about that one. Aren't you always all the way on? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, you don't know how to half-ass anything, Brittany Davis. So I, it's what I love. And I'm glad that uh, we do this podcast because you are a pro and a half. Appreciate all that you are in my life and to our listeners and fans. Thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you next week. One Step Deeper Podcast.com. Hey guys, you know I'm all about healthy nutrition and I have a brand new product I want to tell you about called Athletic Greens. This is not just a multivitamin. It has 75 essential elements that you want to have in your diet from probiotics to greens to digestive enzymes to prebiotics. There's so many things that they pack into the Athletic Greens. The main reason why I love them 
is it puts it all in one place. Like literally you'd have to uh, a la carte buy all of these different supplements and they do it all in one package. So if you go to athleticgreens.com slash Jimmy uh, and you can get a special discount if you go there and the discount is you get a free one year supply of their vitamin D as well as uh, some of their travel packs. Go check it out, you guys. Athleticgreens.com slash Jimmy.